It's a silent afternoon in a high school far, far away. There sits our protagonist in her third study hall, working diligently to complete her schoolwork. A sudden craving comes over her. An urge to do what every student must in times of hunger. Make a purchase from the vending machine. Our protagonist scans her eyes across the machine. So many choices. After thorough deliberation, she concludes that there'd been nothing more satisfying than a bag of Fritos. As done many times before, she inserts a dollar and two quarters. This is where conflict arises. The bag, which she believed to cost a dollar and fifty cents, actually cost a dollar and seventy-five cents. A quarter short. No need to fear, for her friends are here. She approaches the table, asking them, Do you have a quarter? The gals, deep in conversation, replied with a no. She stumbles upon two students in the hallway. To them she inquired, Do you have a quarter? In a situation oddly similar to The Shining, the twins of Boulder, Colorado, had little to say to our red. A short walk ahead will surely lead to 25 US cents. She enters the art room but is met with the cold stares of interrupted art student. She turns to her much-loved art teacher. She responds only with a momentary glance after such a disruption. In the stairwell not far past, another group of photography students can be seen. The youth are hard at work, perfecting their work in the art of images. The bothered model shoes our narrator away for disrupting their work. Do you have a quarter? Our protagonist encounters two students deep in meditational yoga. Looking down upon them, she asks of their interest in a financial offering, but is once again turned down. Our protagonist enters the art studio and sees an artsy French foreign exchange student. She requests a quarter and instead receives a euro. Undeterred in her quest for a quarter, our protagonist ventures out, taking a stroll around the campus for anyone who might aid her. She looks through the grass. Nothing to be found there. Our protagonist appears in during her English teacher's only free period. Mistake number one. Deep in Dostoevsky's crime and punishment, he nods his head, no. Our protagonist arrives in the music room, seeing a punk rock band, practicing for an upcoming gig. Do you have a quarter? She is met only with stares from the members. Their lead singer looks on, local music theory talent. Here lies our drummer, a master in the arts of voice leading, our guitar player who in addition to playing guitar, is also a frequent enjoyer of long walks on the beach. Oh, wait, is this Finnegan's line? Hope for our protagonist slims as the minutes pass during her study hall. She asks all that she encounters. Passing students and the sailors have little to offer. In front of the gym, the protagonist is met with two competitive patty cake players. It's best not to disturb them. A walk around the campus proved unsuccessful. Perhaps there's more to find in the gym below. She approaches the school's nerdy heartthrob and state pickleball champion to challenge him to a game for spare change. Though getting him to agree to that wouldn't be that easy. He questions, What's in it for me? To this, she rebuts, If I win, the quarter is mine. Game on. He sets up for a killer serve, one he's practiced hundreds of times on these courts. She has no idea what she's in for. The champion strikes, serve after serve, 
heralds of victory are slimming. Our protagonist loses the pickleball tournament to the reigning champion. An onlooking fan claps at her defeat. Before the protagonist can even approach the student, he runs away in fear. This is not his first rodeo. He refuses to donate to the cause. In a desperate attempt, our narrator sprints after the two. Her efforts were in vain, however, as she was running against the captains of the lacrosse team. In one final effort, our starved protagonist crosses paths with a teacher walking her dog. She and her four-legged friend, sadly, have nothing to give. After a long, unsuccessful search during a class four study hall in a high school far, far away, our protagonist retreats to the woods for clarity. Though she may not find a quarter here, she returns to the sounds of birds chirping, trees rustling, and the sweet sound of the river. A walk on the sandy shore proved successful for our protagonist. Everybody knows that X marks the spot. She rejoices at the mysterious quarter buried deep within the dunes. All's well that ends well. For you, my viewers, I say this. Careful who you call your friends. I'd rather have four quarters than a hundred pennies. Shut up. Take two. Scene seven something. Action. Be careful who you call your friends. I'd rather have a hundred quarters. <laughs> <laughs>